I think it's about time we sit back and remind ourselves of the things we love in this game. Fun, interactivity, and FTKs. 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 Hey, what's up guys? Phoenix here, and this video is going to be on yet another Yu-Gi-Oh! commentatorial video. I've been doing a few of these as of recently. You'll notice I've been wearing the same shirt throughout all of them because I filmed them all at basically the same time. Bulking up on content that I make makes it easier for me to do this for the entire week, it seems. So hopefully that's a business model I take on board for the rest of my channel's existence. Yippee. But anyway, what I'm going to be showing you is the new and updated Gym Knight FTK, utilizing only Brilliant Fusion and any Gym Monster. It can be uh, Armadillo, although you have to change how you do one simple step. Uh, but basically, just Brilliant Fusion plus any Gym Knight monster in your deck, essentially. And Gym Knight FTK allows you to burn for exactly 8,000 with just this self-contained two-card combo. No outside resources or uh, factors are involved. And basically, the combo got better with Summon Sorceress to the point where it's worth looking at the updated version of it, essentially, because it allows you to consistently burn for 8k without including any bricks in your deck. Whether you went the Nightmare route or the Curious in the Cloud Castle route that the Gym Knight FTK combo had post the last ban list where Le uh, Lady Lapis Lazuli stayed at 3 but Master Diamond went to 1, which is kind of the wrong way that should have been hit, by the way. Um... The previous two ways you could do the deck, you had Glow Bulb in your deck or you had Nightmare Corruptor Ibli in your deck in order to finish out the combo sequence, and those cards are essentially bricks. They could have easily plagued your opening hand, even though they are one-ofs, it's not something you want to be messing with, drawing those and not having actual good combo pieces to actually work your way into the combos. But since Summon Sorceress is legal, we no longer need any of those cards in our deck. Literally just play a regular Gym Knight main deck with no like extra cards that don't really fit the theme and you get to do everything just fine. So that's what I'm going to show you today is Brilliant Fusion plus a Gym Knight monster. So obviously you start by activating Brilliant Fusion and you're going to send Block Dragon and any Gym Knight monster from your deck to the graveyard. Doesn't matter what it is. And then you're going to use your normal summon on your Gym Knight monster. If this is Gym Armadillo, you're just going to search a Gym Knight monster that gets, just gets banished from your hand off Block Dragon because you don't want to banish a Gym Armadillo because it's not something you can use to fuse with off of your Phantom Courts. Uh, things to consider. But so what you're going to do is just link these into Phantom Courts. It's a very, very similar to how the combo starts previously. Like, there's, there's not really a lot of room to change what happens here. But so you're going to Phantom Courts into Gym Knight Fusion if you do not have it already. If you do have it already, congrats. <laughs> you're very, very much in a good position. But from here, you're going to banish three for Block Dragon. Like I said, if you started with Gym Armadillo and not just a Gym Knight monster, whatever card you searched off Armadillo has to be banished from your hand, and you leave the Armadillo like uh, in your graveyard. Uh, because otherwise, you won't be able to do this step, which is Phantom Quartzing your three Gym Knights back into your deck for Lady Brilliant Diamond. So you're going to summon Lady Brilliant Diamond here, immediately use her effect, tributing herself off for Gym Knight, Seraph Knight over here. Not Master Diamond. Seraph Knight is the more important one in this sort of uh, sequencing that I'm showing you. There's multiple different sequencings that you can do, but this is the one that I like the best in terms of like just uh, its establishment on the field and its workability of like how easy it is for you to expand upon it. Because you have so many open zones to summon from the extra deck the way I'm going to show you how to do this. But so now, this is a rock, and this is a rock, so we're going to go into that stank bitch, summon sorceress, and you're going to use block dragon's effect to search three. Now, if you have monsters in your hand at this point, if you're performing this combo with a full five card hand, you could easily extend the burn damage that you're going to do to your opponent by 1500 total by just giving them a monster under uh, summon sorceress's arrow from your hand. So, that would be 500 every time that you burn them, which is three times. And that would be an extra 500 each time, which is 1,500 extra on the overall grand scheme of things. But so, you're going to add Gym Armadillo to your hand here. I play one of it in this list specifically because it's uh, it's really good for this sequence. And if you drew it, you just search a different combination of cards. But so you're going to search Gym Armadillo, Gym Knight Lapis, and Gym Knight Lazuli to equal 8. If you already had a Gym Armadillo in your hand, you would just search uh, basically just another level 4 monster, and then Lapis, and then Lazuli. Or just do something else. Like, it's very easy. You're able to search, like, Obsidian, Lapis, and uh, Rose. You're able to do a bunch of different uh, ways to sequence this around. But, so, not taking any of those factors into account, 
add Armadillo, add Lapis, add Lazuli. Now you've got the Seraphite on the field, so you've got an extra normal summon. So you're going to normal summon the Gym Armadillo into the Summon Sorceress Arrow. And then you're going to use its effect, adding an Obsidian to your hand. And then from here, you're going to use the Summon Sorceress's effect on the Gym Armadillo to summon a Crystal Rose from your deck, summoning it to the zone that it is pointing to. Now you can't use its effect here because it's negated. It would be great if you could. Trust me how broken this would be and how much easier this would be if you could just use it. But instead, you're just going to link it and the armadillo away into binary sorceress in the center monster zone. And this is actually super cool and super important as well because it kind of makes it to where it doesn't matter what side of the field you're working on. Like you notice how I went phantom quartz over here and then summon sorceress over here. In the previous combos, before we had Summon Sorceress, that was something that you did, but you summoned Mrs. Radiant over here as well. And you did that just to open up more zones, and you left your fusion over here. So you summoned from an extra deck into that zone, and then you left it there and went to move on the other side of the board. Obviously going second, this means if your opponent has an extra monster zone occupied, you wouldn't be able to do that. It changes how your combos are structured. But with Summon Sorceress, you don't have to do what I did. You could easily just be working out of this zone the entire time, because once you summon this binary sorceress, you open up this zone and this zone, you have a fusion monster that's still in the same zone that Phantom Quartz pointed to, and then you're able to fuse away with that fusion monster and just get all of your spaces that are available to you filled with special summon monsters anyway. So, things to consider. So, what we've got here is we've got this binary sorceress opening up zones and this summon sorceress opening up this zone. We're going to activate Gym Knight Fusion, and you are going to fuse into Lady Lapis Lazuli here using the Lazuli and the Lapis in your hand, summoning it right here. I'm going to use the La uh, Lazuli's effect to add the Lapis back to your hand, and then you're going to activate the Gym Knight Fusion, banishing Phantom Quartz or Lazuli, does not matter, as long as you're not banishing the Fusion, but even that doesn't actually matter because we're about to get rid of Seraph Knight anyway. So you're going to activate this Gym Knight Fusion for Master Diamond, getting rid of the Seraph Knight, the Lapis and the Obsidian in your hand, and summoning the Master Diamond here or here. And this is what I meant by, like, it doesn't matter what side of the board you're working on, because if you were working on the same side of the board the entire time, you would have just gotten rid of the Seraph Knight into, like, the Lady Lapis Azuli, and then gone through this route. Uh, or just summon the Lady Lapis Azuli here, and the Master Diamond here. Like, there's multiple different ways where the factors are not a big thing. But So Obsidian is going to special summon the Lapis over here, and you have access to the Crystal Rose to summon itself from Grave by banishing either of these two fusions. So we'll just banish the Lady Brilliant Diamond. And then from here, we don't have any Vanillas in the Grave. So we want to use the Crystal Rose just to get a free dump for a Vanilla from our deck of the Grave. And then we're going to go ahead and add back the Gym Knight Fusion, banishing Seraph Knight. Now from here, we're going to use the Lady Lapis Azuli's effect here. And we are going to send Lady Lapis Azuli from Extra Deck to Grave, burn for 3k. And now that there's one in Grave, we're going to use Master Diamond's effect here, banishing the Lady Lapis Azuli from Grave, and then activating Master Diamond's effect, sending a Lazuli from Deck to Grave to burn for 3k. So now this Lazuli is going to trigger, and since we sent another Lapis from our Deck to Grave with the Crystal Rose, it is now copying the name, being Gym Knight Lapis, being a Gym Knight Monster, and then this Lazuli gets to add back this Lapis to our hand. So... From here, we only have this one Master Diamond, we don't have any more in our extra deck because we are Honorable Duelists, and we are conforming to the most recent Forbidden and Limited list. So, what we're going to do from here is we are going to link away the Nightmare uh, link away the Binary Sorceress and the Gym Knight Lapis from our field into Nightmare Unicorn. Use Nightmare Unicorn's effect, discarding the free Gym Knight Fusion, spinning Master Diamond back into our extra deck. Now you may be wondering why I summoned Binary Sorceress and not uh, Proxy Dragon. The reason is very specific, it's because Binary Sorceress is an Earth, meaning if you're running low on Earth monsters, Binary Sorceress is a card you can banish for the summon of Block Dragon, because Block Dragon's special summon is not once per turn, uh, you can summon it as many times as you put it into the grave, very easy for you to uh, get uh, resources there. So if you need the resource to summon it, uh, Proxy Dragon would be a light and would not be something you could use, and that has come up in some of the combo sequences, and you never summon tokens with this deck anyway, so... Binary Sorceress is just as valid to make as Proxy Dragon, literally every single scenario. But, so we've got this Unicorn here, still opening up zones. Pretty nice, pretty nice for it, uh, pretty nice of it to be doing that. For us, you're going to activate the Gym Knight Fusion, banishing a Gym Knight Monster from Grave, adding this to your hand, and now we have three Gym Knight Monsters that we can access here, which is exactly what we need for Master Diamond. So, Lady Lapis Azuli from Field, 
Lapis from hands and the Crystal Rose. Summon the Master Diamond back to the field. And then you're going to special summon the Block Dragon by banishing just three cards. Doesn't matter what they are. You've got multiple stuff in Grave. And you're going to summon this Block Dragon. And then you have the uh, ability to use Master Diamond, banishing the Lady Lapis Azuli in Grave. And then from here, if you're able to continue on play with the other three cards in your hand to summon more fusion monsters, like the, the Zirconia that's still in your extra deck, um, or if you have like ways to put more monsters on board to summon more things, like with obsidians and stuff. Like, if you have a way to make like obsidian plus a monster into Zirconia, that lets you burn for more, obviously. But this one is just a raw, straight 8,000. So you're going to activate Master Diamond, sending Lazuli from Nectar Grave, burning your opponent for the last 2,000 they have for game. So now, this is an exactly 8k burn uh, damage combo. Uh, like I said, if you had another monster in your hand, which is very likely if you're playing a combo deck like Gym Knights, you play a lot of monsters in this deck, you could easily give it to them off Summon Sorceress, uh, and that would allow for an additional 500 burn damage every single time you burn, which is three times in this combo sequence, so that's burning them for 95 if you give them a monster. And then if the rest of your hand also has ways to literally fuse for Zirconia at the very last step, you get Zirconia here or here, and then the Obsidian or whatever would summon a card back here. Uh, but you could easily tack another 500 to 1,000 on in that manner as well, making this combo capable of burning for 9k, meaning that you can still, in theory, play Upstart Goblin if you wanted to increase consistency in your Gym Knight deck. There are other cards like Magnet Reverse that allow you to just summon Master Diamond back from your grave after fusing or linking away with it. Um, that's basically a non-once-per-turn Monster Reborn for this deck as well because everything is rocks and Magnet Reverse summons banished rocks or graveyard rocks that can't be normal summoned or set, which is literally fusion monsters. So like, there's a lot of different things that this deck can do to obviously just extend its range, but as a pure two-card combo that doesn't require any bricks in your deck because you just require Brilliant Fusion plus a monster. You don't need Glow Bulb, you don't need Nightmare Corruptor Ibli. In those combos, you needed the Glow Bulb to go into Cloud Castle to revive Master Diamond. And in the Nightmare version, where you didn't need the Glow Bulb, you still needed Corruptor Ibli because you made Unicorn spun the Master Diamond and then made this into Mermaid, got Ibli from deck, linked away with it, and then gave it to the opponent, and that was the last 500 you needed to make that exactly 8,000 as well. You don't need any of those in these combo sequences. Uh, utilizing Summon Sorceress in the deck. Obviously, you'd still use those if you're in territories that don't have Summon Sorceress, but because we have it now, basically, you just get to FTK your opponent a bit easier. Make your deck a bit more consistent. Do it. Do it. Just do it. Like, just just kill your opponent. Like, Yu-Gi-Oh's not a game about fairness anymore. It's about who can exploit the most. And sometimes that's respectable. But anyway... As always, guys, thanks for watching. Let me know what your thoughts are in the comments down below. As per usual, I can cover more Gym Knight combos in the future, like the Gym Knight Extra Link and stuff like that. That one obviously isn't really an FTK strategy because you have to use so much of your Extra Link in the Link mechanic, but it is still something you can do. You could definitely Extra Link and just play like a really good combo deck with Gym Knights. It's actually really weird. Definitely something to, uh, to approach possibly in future formats. But anyway... Like I said, let me know what you guys' thoughts are in the comments down below, as always. Leave a positive comment or some feedback or whatever if you want to see more videos like this and all that sort of jazz. But other than that, as always, guys, thanks for watching. Like the video if you want to see more. Subscribe if you're new here and want to see more awesome Yu-Gi-Oh! content and stuff like this. Uh, I plan on keeping up this channel quite a bit. And if you want to catch some of my frequent live streams, head on over to my Twitch channel, which is linked in the description as well. Give it a follow, or maybe go join my Discord server that is also linked in the description, where I announce when I'm going to be streaming and chat on a daily basis. So if you're interested and having a direct line to me and some people that think like me as well, then definitely check that link out. But other than that, as I've already said, thanks for your time, thanks for watching as usual guys, and take care. I'll see you in the next video.